What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Olia Adventures, back again with another video. And before we get started with this video, I just want to give a big shout out to y'all and say a big thank you because I met my goal. I met my subscriber goal for the month, and it's a lit. And if you're new here, shout out to you. I'm Aaliyah Adventures. I do everything travel, style, motivation. So if you're interested in that, stick around, hang out with me. But today we're talking about semester at sea. I feel like I haven't made a semester at sea video in so long. Um, and as y'all know, I embark on semester at sea in one short month. I'm currently in Paris, France, trying to figure out and run around and get things together for semester at sea, which is really, really difficult. But it's happening, it's happening in one short month, y'all. And today I just wanna share some things that I wish that I knew before I applied to semester at sea that would have made my application process. And by application process, I mean the process from when you apply to when you embark. So I think that's the application process. But these things would have made my application process literally a little less stressful and I say less stressful because with the visa process which is a topic for a whole another video um it's bound to be stressful but a little less stress if I had known these things and I wrote them down so I'm gonna be referring to a notebook so sorry if you're like sis I want the eye contact sorry I have to make sure that I'm getting everything for y'all my mind when I say my mind is a mess, it's literally a mess. I'm graduating this year, going on semester at sea. Like, there's so many things that I have to keep up with. Okay. Um, so the biggest thing, and all of these things are financial related. So money, money, money. And when I say money, I mean that you need, and I'm not exaggerating y'all, and I'm not trying to scare y'all. Please still apply, please do all the things, but you need at least to make this process comfortable at least five thousand dollars to start and i'm gonna break it down to you why um um because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get talked about especially when you're looking at the price for the program you think oh i need this money by the time that i embark no 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 you need the money a lot sooner than you think um, so all the extra expenses or personal expenses, those are gonna hit you before you even embark on the ship. For some of us, okay, like sis, $5,000, $6,000, girl, I got that in my purse. That's not me, sis. So the first thing you're gonna have to worry about and you're gonna see right away is after you submit your supplemental documents for when you apply, you apply and then you have to submit a behavioral form um and another form you have to submit two forms and then you're able to deposit like give your deposit which is a thousand dollars so you need to have that right away sis you need to have that the second thing that you need to worry about honey and these have been the bane of my existence when i say the bane sis the bane honey because visas Oh, and the fact that I'm applying in France and not in the United States, so I'm going to these and they don't even speak English. But that's beside the point. They cost money. Um, a lot of people use the Semester SC recommended service um, called True Visa, and I think the minimum that people paid this year was about $720. Um, luckily for me, I am on my mom's insurance plan. We have Kaiser, so I was able to get um vaccinated for fairly cheap and i was able to get the medicines that they recommend for fairly cheap so i was really really lucky in that sense but um the yellow fever vaccination i know a lot of people got typhoid i know um a lot of people got the japanese i i forgot what that shot is called but a lot of people got another shot as well um and i think it ran people around 500 dollars which is which is really really expensive so visas and um visas and vaccinations are going to run you around a thousand five hundred dollars if you combine those and that is a big expense that is huge when you are supporting yourself or you're the person that like is paying for this trip so you need to keep that in mind the third thing that you need to um keep in mind 
that people forget all the time is all these little expenses. So packing, when you're packing, you want to get that new duffel bag. When you want to get, um, when you want to get for my ladies, when you want to get your like 40, 40 pack of tampons or pads or whatever you want to buy, laundry detergent, like all of these things that will save you money on your trip that you don't need to be buying in all these different countries because it's gonna like tap your pockets. Buy them now, but that means you have to plan for them. So your all of your luggage and stuff, you have to have that money set aside so that you aren't pinching your pennies when you're like, oh, I need to buy a jacket because it's gonna be cold in this place. You know what I mean? So your hiking shoes, like all this, we're gonna be outside, we're gonna be doing strenuous activities. So um, make sure that you have the proper like clothing um for the activities and the proper clothing for the culture the cultural aspect of where you're going like if you have to cover your head and you need a scarf you have to keep all of that in mind so i would say that's around like 500 to 750 dollars for packing luckily for me i have a lot of like different things because i studied abroad so often that i have like little things that i don't need to pick up but if you're if this is new to you and this is your first time traveling you're gonna have to pick up these items so plan for them um, and save for them another thing is your books for the program so you have to buy your books before you embark um, we embark and then we have like ship orientation and then we have another free day I think to like get settled but then right after that classes start and if you're looking at the syllabus online, you have to do readings, you have to do all of these things. So make sure that you have your books. Um, in another video, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna link a resource for y'all that you can find your books. Like people in my program, we are in a group chat together and we're talking about how, um, how we've been able to finesse, how we've been able to find books online for free, PDFs that people are sharing. Um, and that sort of thing so make sure that um you save for your books which is like an estimated 500 dollars or you're in contact with other students and you're trying to figure out a way to buy your books build programs now i'm going to put something on the screen for y'all there's a poll going around or that went around in my um, group chat that i'm a part of with other sassers other semester sc students and we asked each other, how much did you on average spend on your field program? On field programs, it was about $1,000 um, with 29 people voting that they spent zero to $1,000 with 27, a close behind 27 people saying that they spent between uh, $1,000 and $2,000, 17 people saying that um, they spent two thousand to three thousand dollars so this is this is a substantial amount of money and you have to pay for these field programs before you embark if you want to secure your spot if you see something that you're interested in I would say pay for the the field programs that you are 100% interested in before you embark and kind of leave it up to chance for your other field programs but on average people spend um, like a thousand five hundred dollars but then when you look at the when you look at um when you look at the bottom six thousand plus sixteen people said they spent six thousand dollars or more on field programs alone so when i tell y'all that y'all have to be on it financially that you have to save up for this i mean that <laughs> i mean it sis because these are the things that i wish i knew before applying um to this program i wish i had done a bit more research so if you're watching this video right now you're already ahead of me um and you're already gonna you're already on your way to make your voyage a little less stressful than mine is gonna be <laughs> so kudos to you um and the last thing i want to talk to y'all about is lodging and airfare for embarkation um so if you're looking to fly into town for embarkation, you're gonna have to find somewhere to stay and you're gonna have to pay for the flight. I keep saying luckily for me, y'all, I was truly blessed on this voyage. 
But luckily for me, I go to school in San Diego and I have friends in San Diego that I'm able to stay with when I'm getting ready for embarkation, which is literally so huge. And I don't have to buy a flight to San Diego either because I live in Los Angeles and I'll just be staying with a friend. So those are basically really the things that I want y'all to think about, the things that I want y'all to plan for because I want everyone to have a bomb semester at sea voyage and participate in everything that you want to participate in so keep those things in mind and i just want to say thank y'all for watching i love when we just have these talks i love i love giving y'all the tools that i didn't have when i was applying and i hope this is helpful for y'all don't forget sis to subscribe um and watch all my other semester at sea videos i have them in a playlist for y'all convenient so that um Y'all are able to access different things that I've talked about, different ways to finance your voyage. And I'll see y'all again in the next video. Peace.